Hi everyone, my name is Wim, and this lightning talk is about the climate cost of the AI revolution. First, some context. If we look at electricity emissions, then we see that renewables are actually only a small fraction of electricity generation right now. So any high-tech company that claims to be green because they use renewables is actually just pushing emissions off onto others who can't use those renewable resources because there are not enough to go around. The other point is that um, we don't really need to increase demand for renewables because renewables are already the cheapest way to generate electricity for the generators. So if they want maximum profit, they roll out renewables anyway. So uh, using more of them is actually not the answer, especially because what we see now is that we use more renewables, but we don't use fewer fossil fuel uh, generated electricity. So um, we the, the renewables are not replacing the fossil fuel uh, generation. So renewables are therefore not really the answer to problems of um, electricity use, especially not for high-tech applications like ICT. Let's look a bit at the uh, emissions from ICT then. Um, so purely to keep to the Paris Agreement, uh, we would need to cut the emissions from ICT by a quarter from their current level in the next 20 years. So that means we would have a budget of 500 megaton of CO2 per year, and that's global and for the foreseeable future. Um, so then let's look at the cost of AI and all this. And in particular, I want to talk about ChatGPT-like AI, which are called large language models. And um, so there's a lot being said and written about the cost of these things already. And I want to summarize it a bit. First of all, um, training of these large language models, although it, it generates large amounts of CO2, in the big picture, this is hardly anything. Even if we would train these models continuously, and we would have hundreds of them, we would still have about a percent of global ICT emissions. The embodied carbon, so the carbon that goes into building the machines, the supercomputers to do the training, is only 20% of the total training. So that's an even smaller amount. So training really isn't a problem. What is more of a problem is the use of these things. Because if we would replace traditional search like Google and Bing do with ChatGPT as default, the emissions would increase 40 times. So we would uh, need 40 times more um, electricity to do that and therefore 40 times more emissions. Um, and if we scale that up to say 100 of such models, which is not so crazy because uh, maybe they're not all ChatGPT style search, but there are many other applications that, well, we then would be using 40% of the global ICT carbon budget and we can't exceed that budget. And so that would make everything a lot harder. So we must reduce the this uh, carbon cost of AI. Um, so, if we want to do that, um, then we could try to curb use. So we could say, okay, we'll put a carbon tax on electricity usage, and or we would have cap and trade where we have the tax, but in addition, you can trade if you go over your limits. Um, and that seems like a good way to reduce uh, electricity use in general, but um, a lot of those high-tech companies already claim that they generate on-site and then they wouldn't be um, treated as part of the um, these carbon tax or um, cap and trade schemes because the local generation would be exempt. But what does it really mean, this local generation? I mean, if you have something like ChatGPT with the current amount of queries that, that it has, you need 500 megawatt of electricity, and that is the size of just about the largest wind farm that exists in the UK, um, which is also the largest one in Europe. So it's a really a huge amount of um, power that you need just to uh, satisfy the current demands of uh, ChatGPT. Uh, so when you say on-site generation, uh, it requires about 55 square kilometers of land that could otherwise be used for a wind farm that could actually reduce um, emissions from fossil fuels. 
So um, that's not a good idea. So what could we do instead? Well, we could reduce the energy that is needed by these models because uh, fortunately they're actually right now very inefficient and we could easily um, improve their performance by a factor of 100 and then everything would be fine. Um, or wouldn't it? Because, well, if we make the, the energy efficiency better, then it means they become cheaper to use and then typically you get more usage and then um, we might end up with more emissions. This is called the rebound effect. And actually um, what this says is basically a purely technological fix for um, this problem doesn't really exist, which means we need a societal economical fix. And... Um, I would summarize this as what we really need is frugal AI. So we would uh, need to treat AI as a finite and precious resource and only to be used when necessary and then as effectively as possible. So if we do that, then um, we could have AI and we could still save the planet. Thank you very much. <laughs>